Hi there, this is Anthony Gordon with Avid. We're coming back at you from South by Southwest 2011. I'm here with Jason Solsteimer, uh, who many of you guys might recognize from the Von Bondies. But you're here for a very different reason this year, are you not? Yeah, I'm, I'm here with my, my main band, The Hounds Below. Von Bondies are on a hiatus while all of the other members tour and I tour. And uh, yeah, it's been great. We've done three shows so far. We have one more. We did a TV show earlier today. It's been going great. How many times have you done South By over the years? Five times. Two times in this band and three with my old band. And um, this year, years in the past, was all about seeing like the big bands. Like this year, it's Queens of the Stone Age and Strokes. But this year, all the bands I've never heard of are the ones I'm really excited about. And I've seen, I've seen now, like Twin Shadow. I, they're nothing like anything I listen, but they're just really good. I saw a band called the Globes from Spokane. Like. Just band stumbling into a room where yeah. nobody's at, and I'm like, God, this band's amazing. Yeah. I think music's getting a little bit more, you know, deep. Just a little bit more deep, you know. Not so about the light show, and uh, I think it has a lot to do with home recording. You know, honestly, people get to write songs quicker, you know. And without the ever watchful eye of somebody who might be more experienced with them in the studio, yeah. I found like when I was just getting going in bands, I was intimidated recording in a studio because there's some grizzled old dude. Who's very knowledgeable and <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the home recording thing actually has changed the level of creativity and expression that you can do at home. Because you know what, you write emotional songs. Doing that, being emotional in front of people. If you don't make songs in a band, yeah. you don't realize that it's something to put your heart on your sleeve yeah. and and get out there in front of there and put it out there. People, you know, you worry. Yeah, I mean, for me, a lot of it had to do with the first time I went to a big studio. I could have done what I did there in a month, in a week at home. I just was intimidated. I mean, I, I was seriously intimidated. We worked with uh, Jerry from the Talking Head, Sir Harrison, yeah. and he produced our record. And like, he was great, but I definitely wasn't comfortable. You know, there was millions of plugins and different, you know, rack units. And I was like, can I just play the song? And now that like I've just finally in the last week, thanks to you guys, started doing home recordings for the first time in 13 years. So like, already we did three new songs. So. Which is also very interesting to me because in addition to being like a road warrior band dude, I mean you've spent plenty of time in the van and like you built your old band from the ground up yeah. and you've also worked producing other bands. Yeah, I mean because I tour so much, I normally have to cancel. My big thing is pre-production. I'm not a studio guy. I mean hopefully I get better at it now that products are so much easier to use. Yeah. I don't know, I'm not good at cutting tape. I used to use reel to reel and I was awful at it. I just, you know, maybe I wasn't a good enough musician, but I can write songs. So, the way technology is now, why not take a hold of it? I mean, if the Beatles would have had Pro Tools, we would have had 10 more Beatles records. Yeah. I mean, they tried to turn four tracks into 16. Yeah. I mean, they wanted more tracks. I mean, all great musicians back in the day wish they had the ability to do it, you know, digital. Yeah. Analog now, I, I still use it sometimes randomly, but nowadays, Digital's gotten so good, and I was a hardcore analog guy just because I'm from Detroit. Yeah. You know, the fact that we even have electricity is amazing. Yeah. You know, the city doesn't burn down. I love the place, but everything's analog there, and I like that, but digital's just, it makes more sense. Yeah. It makes more sense. It's easier to get your song done well the way you want it without having to splice tape and worrying about, you know. I still do believe you should be able to record a whole song in 16 tracks. You should never need more than that on a standard rock and roll band. Yeah. If you do, and you need 16 layers of guitar, then there's something wrong with your songwriting. So let me ask you a question, going back to something you said earlier, and this will seem like almost an obvious question. You mentioned pre-production. Yeah. So let's say you're in a garage rock band, you're a kid, like you're yeah. in high school, you're like your first band, you're looking about doing a demo. They might not know what pre-production is. What is pre-production? Pre-production is where you get to the point where you can go in the studio and it's done. And a lot of times you need somebody who's not in the band just so that they can say, dude, your intro's two minutes long and the song's three minutes. Like, what's what's the point? You know, what's the point of having two minutes of just yourself wailing on the guitar for no reason? It's like, I don't, I'm in a song, I mean, I'm from the very much the Richie Valens, Buddy Holly, where like, they have a verse and a chorus. Like, people work full-time jobs, let them enjoy their weekends watching you. So for me, it's just, it's really strange that like, Pre-production is it's more important. Yeah. You know, you should be able to have the song down so when you go record, it's instantaneous. Yeah. You don't have to go in and do 40 takes because you don't know what your part is. Right. Pre-production is where like, do the chorus one more time, do a crescendo, whatever. And you're not doing it for the mass media, you're doing it for yourself. Yeah. 
Because you don't know, I mean, you know what's best for you the moment you're playing, but when you go back, after I listen to some of my old like records I've been on, I like, shit, that's way too long. That intro killed the song, you know? And there was no reason to do it, I just didn't, I didn't have any, I didn't have anybody in the room saying, I really love the songs, this is like two minutes too long, yeah. you know? And um, some, some bands are good at playing long, but I'm very much, I like songs. Yeah. I like a beginning and an end for a reason, you know? My favorite thing in working for producers has always been during the pre-pro part, yeah. because it's almost impossible, for me at least, to be honestly objective yeah. about everything. You know, like you, yeah. part, maybe your bass lick is the coolest thing in the song to you. Yeah. But maybe that's not necessarily what the song needed. Having that outside third party with no personal investment in their awesome lick yeah. uh, or whatever it is can really help a band take something away rather than add something. And they're like, oh, this song is now a little bit more effective because we're not all trying to do a riff right here. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I always thought that a song should be able to be played by one person and be sold. Like, people in the audience should like it with just one guy singing and playing bass or guitar or piano. Yeah. And that should be more than enough. If you need to add like 16 more instruments, then the song's the weak part, yeah. not the musicianship, you know? So for me, it's important to have a good song first. It doesn't matter how good your studio is. Yeah, absolutely. You have a good song. Yeah. And uh, so to me, that's always been that's always been really interesting, you know? So tell me what's going on with Hounds Below, because you, you've been here playing for you know, how many people? Tens of thousands of people. Uh, and now you're here breaking a new band. Yeah. Uh, for the second time in your career. It's, it's exciting because people that came to the show just because they might have saw my old band, they have no idea what they're about to see. Because there's, there's no blues riffs at any point in any song. And there's no, people are like, you guys are from Michigan? It's like, oh well, yeah. It's like, not all Michigan is three chords and like tattooed and drunk. Yeah. You know, it's not all of it's hard rock and jumping off amps. like. Even those bands had good songs, it's just that the way we always conveyed stuff in the past was play as loud and as fast as you can. If they give you an hour to play a show, play 20 minutes. Make everyone pissed off that they that that's all they got to see. Yeah. Make people wanting more. And now that's it's some old school showmanship right there, man. That's some stagecraft. Well, yeah, I mean, honestly, you should you should the first time you play for a city, you should blow them away if that's your kind of music. And now it's more. It's very vocal centric. It is 90% about the vocals in, in the band I'm in now. And so it's interesting. It's, it's interesting. Uh, I saw these dudes the other day. They're amazing. Uh, lots of singing. Yeah. It's like sexy, soulful, slinky, morose. It's, it's got all kinds of cool vibe to it. Like Roy Orbison meets like Modest Mouse or something. It's weird. Yeah. The modern meets very retro, Elvisy kind of vocals. Yeah. You know. It, it, emotional and beautiful and really killer. This is John, the bass player. Let's get him hey, in. Hey, come on in. This is John. Hey, He's John. Also from Michigan. He's in the house. Hey, I'm Anthony. Uh, nice to meet you. He's just hey. walking by. Yeah, I, was, I just saw. I was on the curb actually. This is what happens in South by Southwest. You just walk by. Here they are. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, we do have to wrap it up. Um, thank you guys for coming. I saw show yesterday. It was amazing. You guys were great. Thank you very much. Um, where do we go to check out Hounds Below? Um, you can go to thehoundsbelow.com, and there's links to Facebook and everything else. Facebook, Twittering, all that sort of thing. And if you find like a BitTorrent, just download it for free. I mean, at this point, just it's all, it's all about getting the music out there. You know, if I wanted to make money, I would have been you know not a stock you know I wouldn't have been a stock guy. I'd be broke. I'd be a doctor. I'd be a, or a data doctor. One of those two things. You know. Or a I, I would have, but I think that requires some schooling that I'm pretty busy. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, dudes, for dropping by. It's good to oh, yeah, drop out of the street. Uh, everyone go to the website, check out when they're coming to your town, check out new music. Yep. Good luck. Congratulations yep. on, the, on the awesome new music you guys have been uh, making, and Thank we'll you see you much. next time.